so I'm doing this privately because um, I just I feel like I like I like doing this um, privately better than publicly because it's, it's I get a better um, I don't know I, I I'm not good in front of people so I, I'm glad I'm doing it you know privately. One second I need to like close my blinds because there's a huge glare. There we go. Okay, so yeah, welcome to as I knock over all of them. Uh, welcome to the massive, and I mean like massive, uh, Blu-ray and uh, Criterion update. Give me one sec. Plug these in, baby. Plug the tree in. Give me some light. How's that look? That's better. All right. So yes, we have a shit ton of Blu-rays and Criterions to go over today. Um, I have bought these over the span of weeks. Uh, so don't think I, you know, spent all this in one place because I definitely did not because that'd be insane. But, um, I mean, you can see the thumbnail. There's a shit ton. Uh, I think we're going to start with the Criterions first and then move into the Blu-rays. Um, these are from, these are buys from, like, my work, uh, Best Buy, Target, uh, Black Friday. It, it, it spans over so many things. I haven't, I haven't like, made a video or anything really in about a month or two, so... Um, yeah, let's just get right into the Criterions, because I do have quite a bit. Okay, let's grab them, and hopefully we don't drop them. And, uh, the thing is, like, I, uh, some of these you might see, you, you may have already seen in, in a previous video. Um, that's because I don't have a good memory, so I might be showing off something that you've already seen, or you did see in the, or you saw in my, um, you know, updated movie collection, Sorry about that. We're gonna show. I'm gonna show it to you anyway. Um, so yeah, first up is Michelangelo Antoni Anti uh, Antonioni's. I can never pronounce his name. Uh, is Blow Up. This is a DVD Criterion. Uh, I got this during the month long fifty percent off sale that was happening at uh, Barnes and Noble. Uh, this is a blind buy. I don't like to do that with Criterions. I usually like to like watch them first before I, you know, buy the Criterion. But uh, I made an exception because this looked to me that was a nice, a really nice looking Criterion, and I've heard good things about it. So I'm hoping I'm gonna like it. But here is the cover. Like I said, it's a nice looking Criterion. There's the spine. This is spine number eight hundred and sixty-five. And then on the back, gives you a nice description of the movie and uh, all the bonus features. I don't know if you can read that. Probably can't. Um, you know, why not? I'll read all the descriptions, too. This will be a boring video. I'm going to make it boring for you. In 1966, Michelangelo Antioni uh, transplanted his ex existentialist uni to the streets of swinging London for this international sensation. The Italian filmmaker's first English language feature, a countercultural masterpiece about the act of seeing an art of image making. Blow Up takes the form of a psychological mystery starring David Hemmings as a fashion photographer who unknowingly captures a death on film after following two lovers in a park. Antioni's meticulous aesthetic, control, and intoxicating color palette breathe life into every frame. Um, and the jazzy sounds of Herbie Hancock, a beautifully evasive performance by Vanessa Redgrave, and a cameo by the Yardbirds made the film a transporting time capsule from a bygone era. Blow Up is a seductive immersion into creative passion and a brilliant film by one of cinema's greatest artists. It's also Warner Brothers, so, I mean, how bad could it be, right, you know? Um, but the special features, uh, they loaded it up with it, uh, bonus features. Uh, it includes... Uh, a new restored 4K digital transfer. New pieces about director Michelangelo Antioni's artistic approach featuring photography curators Walter Moser and Philippe, uh, Felipe Garner and art historian David Allen Meller. Blow Up of Blow Up, a 2016 documentary on the making of the film. Conversation from 2016 between Garner and actor Vanessa Redgrave. Archival interviews with Antioni and actors David Hemmings and Jane Birkin trailers plus a book featuring an essay by film scholar david forgax an updated 1966 account of the film's shooting by stig bjorkman the questionnaires the director distributed to, photo to photographers and painters while developing the film and the 1959 julio 
uh, Cortazar's short story on which the film is loosely based. That's all in the book, but uh, we take out and we get this nice, aesthetically pleasing slipcase. Very, or, um, you know, the case inside the slipcase. Then you open it up, and here is what you have inside. And then you have the two discs. They're, uh, you know, standard. It's just disc one and disc two, so it's nothing, nothing crazy. Uh, but the book that comes with it is really, really, like, really filled. Like, I can show you, like, how they're called. Like, that's a book. It's one of the thickest books I think I've ever gotten with a Criterion. Besides, um, besides E2 Mama Tom Bien, I think it's, like, the thickest book that I've gotten with a Criterion, which is really cool. Hope I like the movie enough to, like, actually want to read the book, too, so that's good. But, yeah, that is a blow-up on uh, Criterion DVD. Next, uh, we have a Blu-ray Criterion. And it's for a movie I saw <clears throat> very recently this uh, very recently this year for the first time, and I fell in love with it. So when I saw it on the you know sale, it was like only twenty bucks. I was like, yeah, I, I gotta pick it up. And uh, uh, that is uh, um, Bob Fosse's All About Jazz. Now, when I first heard about this movie, I thought it was like something to do with Chicago because you know all that jazz, you know that song from the movie. I thought that's what it was. But no, it's um, completely different than that. Uh, it, th this movie is amazing, and Roy Sheeter, Roy Sheeter, he is the um, the main guy in this movie, and he does such an amazing job on this uh, on on this performance. Um, it has a great style to it. Uh, it's so entertaining, and that third act. We'll throw some people off, but I think it's brilliant the way they handle that third act. But yeah, here is the front. It has, like, the title and everything. There's the spine. This is spine number 724. And here's the back. It's very, uh, very black, you can tell. Uh, description of this one. The, the pre... Oh, God, I'm such a bad reader. The pre turner the preternal oh god whatever gifted director and choreographer Bob Fosse turned the camera on his own life for this madly imaginative self exorciating musical masterpiece. Roy Sheeter gives the performance of his career as Joe Gideon, whose exhausting work schedule, mounting a Broadway production by day and editing his latest movie by night, a routine of a of Aphetamies, I don't know. Booze and sex are putting his health of, at serious risk. Fosse burrows into Gideon's and his own mind, rendering his interior world as phantasmagoric spectacle. Fucking creature, and using all these big words, I mean. Um, assembled with visionary editing that makes dance come alive on screen as never before, and overflowing with sublime footwork by the likes of Anne Ra 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 Rain King. Uh, Leland Palmer and Ben Vereen, all that jazz pushes the musical genre to personal depths and virtuistic artistic aesthetic heights. God, Criterion, can you be any more fucking, uh, what's the word? Pretentious. Okay, sorry. Uh, alright, so the, the, um, the special features include a 4K digital restoration with 3.0 surround DTS HD master audio soundtrack. Audio commentary featuring editor Alan Heim. Selected scene audio commentary by actor Roy Sheeter. Interviews from 2014 with, Hel with Heim and Fosse biographer Sam Wasson. Conversation from 2014 between actors Anne Ranking and Erzabet Foldy. Uh, episode of the talk show Tomorrow from 1980 featuring director Bob Fosse and choreographer Agnes de Milly. Uh, interviews with Fosse from 1981 and 1986 on set footage. Portrait of Choreographer, a 2007 documentary on Fosse. The soundtrack, Perverting the Sanders, a 2007 documentary about the film's music. An interview with George Benson from 2007 about his song On Broadway, which appears in the film. Plus a booklet featuring an essay by critic Hilton Alls. And when you uh, open up, you get this disc and it says, uh, It's showtime, folks. And then you also get some inside artwork. If I take the disc out, I can show you that we do get some nice background artwork. 
I'm sure you can see it. But yeah, I like that disc artwork. And then of course, you also have your book, which is uh, pretty thick as well. Good amount, good amount of stuff in that. Um, and that is uh, pretty much it for all of that jazz. I guess I should, I, I'm gonna give you uh, these movies ratings as well, so might as well. So Blow Up, obviously I have not seen, so I can't rate it. All that jazz, I gave a 10 out of 10 though. Amazing movie. All right, moving on, we have probably the strangest Criterion release ever to ever come out of that uh, out of the uh, company, uh, solely because it, it's a strange one. But I recently got this one at work. And um, that is The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. So as you can tell, this looks like a standard Blu-ray. But in actuality, it's a real criterion. I don't understand how they did it or why they did it like this, but this is a real criterion in a Blu-ray fucking case. It makes no sense. Um, but anyway, here's the front. This is, of course, directed by David Fincher. And then here is the spine... This is spine number 476. So, like, yeah, they're, like, they're 476. That, like, that's into Criterion. Like, I, they, they, I think it has something to do with, like, the rights issues or something. Because, um, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a strange one. It is. It really is. Because I don't, I don't think the, I don't even think the menu is, like, your typical Criterion menu either. So, I don't know. It's strange. But, yes, this is, uh, of course, The Curious Keys of Benjamin Button. Um, this is the one, uh, of course, by David Fincher. And it stars, you know, Brad Pitt and Kate Blanchett. This is the one where, you know, where the, the guy, uh, you know, is born as an old man and dies as a young baby. Very strange movie, but it's really good. Um, but yeah, uh, here's the back. I didn't show you the back yet. There's the back. A uh, description of this one. I was born under unusual circumstances. That was a, that's a quote. Thus begins The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, the Academy Award-winning film starring Brad Pitt as a man who was born in his 80s and ages backward, and Kate Blanchett as the woman who he is destined to fall in love with forever. The Curious Case of Benjamin Button is a monumental journey, as unusual as it is epic, that follows Benjamin's remarkable uh, adventure of romance and redemption from the end of World War I to the 21st century. Directed by David Fincher, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button is a powerful testament to life and death, love and loss. So, yeah, it's a pretty powerful movie. It's also pretty fucking long as well. Yeah, it's like 165 minutes, so it's like almost three hours long. Uh, the director-approved two-disc special edition features interviews with Brad Pitt and Kate Blanchett, an audio commentary from, fe from featuring Academy Award-nominated director David Fincher, footage revealing the innovative techniques behind the Academy Award-winning visual effects and makeup, step-by-step -step examination of the, motion of the motion capture process aging Brad Pitt, in-depth um, exploration of David Fincher's creative process on the set, interview with acclaimed composer Alexandre Desplat about the score, featurettes on the film's storyboards, uh, costumes, and Academy Award winning art direction, stills galleries including uh, costume designs and candid behind the scenes production photos, optional French and Spanish dubbed soundtracks, English subtitles for deaf and hearing, oh yeah, that's bullshit, and then plus an essay by film critic uh, Kent Jones. I'm starting to notice that a lot on uh, a lot of these criterions, uh, Kent Jones is a reoccurring uh, fellow. He pops up on these, uh, you know, booklets and shit. But yeah, this is uh, The Man Who Watched the Hours Go By by Kent Jones. Come on. I'll read that. And we just have two basic discs. One's, uh, one has a white criterion logo and one has a black one. But yeah, at least you get two discs. That's always nice. And this movie I give, uh, I haven't seen it in a while, but when I first saw it, I'd say like a 7 or 8 out of 10. Good movie. Alright, this one's a really recent like, Criterion release. Um, I can't wait to rewatch it on the Criterion because I heard it's like a better transfer than the Netflix version. Uh, and that is The Irishman by Martin Scorsese. Um, this is a really nice Criterion. Uh, here's the front. Here is the spine. Here's the other spine. Uh, this is a this is um, spine number one thousand fifty eight, and here's the back. There's a lot of stuff on the back. You can tell. So the back, the description says, Martin Scorsese's cinematic mastery is on full display in this sweeping crime saga, which serves as an al as an elegiac summation of his six decade career. 
Left behind by the world, former hitman and union truck driver Frank Sheeran looks back from a nursing home on his life's journey to the ranks of organized crime, from his involvement with Philadelphia Mob, the ranks of uh, mob boss Russell Buffalino, played by Joe Pesci, to his association with T Teamsters Union head Jimmy Hoffa, played by Al Pacino, to the rift that forced him to choose between the two, an intimate story of loyalty and betrayal with writ large across the epic canvas of mid-20th century American history. The Irishman, based on the real-life Sheeran's confessions as told to writer Charles Brandt for the book I Heard You Paint Houses, is a uniquely reflective late career triumph that balances its director's virtuoso set pieces with a profoundly personal rumination on aging, morta oh my god, yeah, mortality, and the decisions in regards to the shape of life. Yeah, that is very true. Whoever writes the descriptions for these criterions are fucking right on the money. Because this is something you will never get from a basic Blu-ray release of this movie. God, the movie is so, so dense. And people, I don't know, people don't like, people didn't like this movie very much. I'm not sure why. Um, I mean, there was a lot of people that did love it. Like, I'm one of the people that love it. It's, it's a 10 out of 10 for me. Um, it's in, it's in Scorsese's, like, top five for me. It's so fucking good. Uh, but there's also people that, like, eh, it's just not good. It's too long, blah, blah, blah. It's like, whatever. So the director approved two Blu-ray special edition features include a new 4K digital transfer approved by director Martin Scorsese with Dolby Atmos soundtrack. Very excited to watch that. A newly edited roundtable uh, conversation among Scorsese and actors Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, and Joe Pesci, originally recorded in 2019, making The Irishman a new program featuring Scorsese, the lead actors, producers Emma Tillinger, Koskov, Jane... Um, Rosenthal and Erwin Winkler, director of photography Rodrigo Perito, and others from the cast and crew. Gangster's Requiem, a new video essay by film critic Farron Smith Neiman, Naimi, about the Irishman's synthesis of Scorsese's singular formal, formal style. Anatomy of a Scene, The Irishman, a 2020 fe program featuring Scorsese's analysis of Frank Sheeran appreciation night scene from the film. The Evolution of Digital De Aging, a 2019 program on the visual effects created by, for the film. Exerted interviews with Frank the Irishman, Sheeran, and Teamsters Trade Reunion leader Jimmy Hoffa from 1999 and 1963. Trailer and teaser, uh, and an essay by critic Jeffrey O'Brien. Yeah, there's quite a lot of stuff on this criterion, but here is the... Oh, I love that. That artwork is so nice. And then on the back, we have Joe Pesci's character. And when you open it up, you have Al Pacino's character. And also a news clipping. When you open it up, you get the book. It says, I heard you paint houses. And on the back, you have a house that got painted. <laughs> so when you uh, flip through it, it's pretty pretty good. Pretty good amount of stuff in there. And then, of course, you have your two Blu-ray discs. One's red, one's black. Not sure if you get... Let me see if you get background artwork. Yeah, not really kind of just like an overlapping image nothing really cool yeah but yeah this is a uh, really nice criterion i can't wait to rewatch the movie on criterion and not netflix because i heard like i said i heard the transfer for this is phenomenal and they say it's it might be like better than uh the netflix copy so that's good to hear all right uh 10 out of 10 by the way for that all right next we have la Hain. this is uh directed by who is directed by Matthew uh, Kasovitz. Uh, he's a French filmmaker. And um, uh, what this is a, an amazing movie. I give this one a also a 10 out of 10. Here's the front. Here's the spine. This is spine number 381. And then here's the back. It says, Matthew Kasovitz took the film world by storm with Lahaine, a gritty, unsettling, and visually explosive look at the racial and cultural vi vol... vol Volatil vol oh my god, I can't fucking read. Volatility in modern day France, specifically the low income ben Banlio districts on Paris's outskirts. Aimlessly passing their days in the concrete environs of their dead end suburbia, Vince, Hubert, and Salid, Said, a Jew, an African, and an Arab, give American give human faces to France's immigrant populations, their bristling resentment that they're managed 
at their marginalization, slowly simmering until it reaches a climatic boiling point. A work of tough beauty, behind is a landmark of contemporary French cinema and a gripping reflection of the uh, of its country's ongoing identity crisis. Yeah, it's a great description, honestly, because this movie tackles so many themes, um, so many relevant relevant uh, topics that's even like today uh, that's still happening. It's just it's so timeless. But um, the director approved Blu-ray special edition features included restored high definition digital transfer. Supervised by director Matthew Kasovitz with 5.1 surround DTS HD master audio soundtrack. Audio commentary by Kasovitz. Introduction by actor Jodie Foster. Ten Years of Lahine, a documentary that brings together cast and crew a decade after the film's landmark release. Featurette on the film's Benioff setting. A production footage, deleted and extended scenes, each with an afterword by Kasovitz. Gallery of behind-the-scenes photos, trailers, plus a booklet featuring an essay by film scholar Jeanette. Vin Vincent Dio and a 2006 appreciation by filmmaker Costa Gavras. Let me open it up. We got our booklets. And then we have uh, our disc. And there is some background artwork on this one, so I could show you that. One of the best shots in the movie. But yeah. Uh, 10 out of 10, definitely one of the best movies out there, I would say. Uh, if you want to, like, you know, watch the movie, I recommend watching it first if you like it. And then if you like it enough, then I would definitely buy the Criterion because it's worth it uh, if you like the movie that much. All right, uh, next we have uh, another DVD Criterion. This is the complete Lady Snowblood collection coming with the two movies. Uh, Lady Snowblood and then Lady Snowblood Love Song of Vengeance, both directed by Toshiyata Fujita. Uh, I've only seen the first one, and the first one I gave a 10 out of 10, because it's an amazing movie. And I think it's also, it was the inspiration for um, Kill Bill, which, I mean, obviously, like, come on. Here's the front. Here's the spine. This is spine number 790 and 791. And description just says, uh, A young woman trained from childhood as an assassin and hell-bent on revenge for heinous crimes committed against her family, hacks and slashes her way to gory satisfaction in turn of the 20th century Japan, rampant with inventive violence and spectacularly choreographed swordplay. Toshiya, Toshiya, Toshiya Fujita's pair of influential cult classic Lady Snowblood and Lady Snowblood Love Song of Vengeance are bloody, beautiful extravagant, uh, extravaganzas composed of one elegant widescreen composition after another. The First Lady Snowblood was a major inspiration for Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill Saga, and both of Fujita's films remain cornerstones of Asian action cinema. I mean, that makes sense. Uh, two DVD special edition features include a new 2K digital transfers uh, of both films, new interviews with Kazuo Koiki, the writer of the manga that inspired the films, and screenwriter uh, Norio Ozada, Trailers, new English subtitle translations, plus an essay by critic Howard Hampton. And we open it up. You do get a nice pamphlet, but you also get, you know, your two discs. There's uh, Lady Snowblood, and then behind it you have Lady Snowblood 2. And this is, like, not your typical uh, booklet because it actually does fold out into a poster. But when you open it all the way up, I mean, it is, like, it does have writing on it and stuff, like... It's not like not doesn't have writing, but you can also just use it as a poster. You know, it's a really dull poster. So I don't know. It's kind of a strange one, but uh, the movie is really good. I mean, well, I've only seen the first one, and what I can tell you is that uh, it's amazing, and I recommend it highly because if you love action and if you love you know Asian cinema, this is one that you want to check out. All right, next we have another Scorsese movie. This is the Last Temptation of Christ. I saw this once on Peacock and fell in love with it. Um, so when I, you know, of course when I saw the sale going on, I was like, I uh, might as well get the Criterion now. But yes, this is uh, The Last Mission of Christ. It stars Willem Dafoe. Uh, he is such an amazing talent. I love Willem Dafoe so much. Um, but here's the front. Here's the spine. This is spine number 70. This is one of the earlier Criterions that came out. Uh, it says, The Last Temptation of Christ by Martin Scorsese is a towering achievement. Though it initially en engendered an enormous uh, controversy, the film can now be viewed as the remarkable, profoundly personal work of faith that it is. This 15-year labor of love, it, an, an, uh, an adaptation of Nico's, 
Nikos Kazanzaki's landmark novel that imagines an alternate fate for Jesus Christ features outstanding performances from Willem Dafoe, Barbara Hershey, Harvey Keitel, Harvey Dean Stanton, or I'm sorry, Harry Dean Stanton, and David Bowie, bold cinematography from by the great Michael Balhaus, and a transcendent score by Peter Gabriel. Yeah, the score is amazing in this movie. And it's probably because of uh, Peter Gabriel. Uh, the director-approved Blu-ray special edition features include a restored high-definition digital transfer, supervised and approved by cinematographer Michael Ballhaus and editor Thelma Schoonmaker, with a 5.1 DTS HD master audio soundtrack by supervising sound editor Skip Leeway. Leafs, Leafs say. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, audio commentary featuring director Martin Scorsese, actor Willem Dafoe, and writers Paul Schrader and Jay Cox. Galleries of production stills, research materials, and costume designs. Uh, location production footage shot by Scorsese. Interview with composer Peter Gabriel with a stills gallery of traditional instruments used in the score. And it includes also an essay by film critic David Ehrenstein. So we do have a pretty small pamphlet. Not much of a, you know, not much of a thing, but whatever. And then uh, here is the disc. Keeping with that red aesthetic. And uh, the chapters are on the left for some reason. I guess that's what I guess I used to do chapters. But uh, this movie, ten out of ten. All right, next we have Marriage Story, another Netflix movie released on Criterion. Um, one of the best movies of last year, uh, and also this is a really nice Criterion. Uh, here is the front. Here's the spine. This is spine number one thousand thirty-eight. And it says, a love story about divorce and marriage coming apart and a family coming together. Marriage story is a hilarious and harrowing, sharply obs is a hilarious and harrowing, sharply observed and deeply compassionate film of this acclaimed writer director Noah Baumbach. Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson delivered tour de force performances as Charlie, a charismatic New York theater director wedded to his work, and Nicole, an actor who's ready to change her own life. Their hopes for an umbilical, oh, umbilical, no, 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 a amicable <laughs> divorce fade as they are drawn into a system that pits them against each other and forces them to redefine their relationship and their family. Featuring Bravo, uh, bra bravo I can never fucking read anything right. Bravura, I think that's how you say it, finally drawn supporting turns from Alan Alda, Ray Liotta, and Laura Dern, who won an Academy Award for a performance Lee here as a trio of lawyers who preside over the legal battle. Marriage Story, nominated for six Academy Awards, including Best Picture, is a work of both intimacy and scope that ultimately invokes hope amid the ruins. Yeah, this was nominated for six uh, Academy Awards, but it fucking barely won any. I mean, this could have won for screenplay, no doubt, but whatever. Uh, Director-approved Blu-ray Special Edition features, including a new 4K digital transfer, supervised by director Noah Baumbach, with 5.1 surround DTS HD master audio soundtrack, a new interview with Baumbach, The Players, a new program featuring interviews with actors Scarlett Johansson, Adam Driver, Laura Dern, Alan Alda, Julie Haggerty, and Ray Liotta. The Filmmakers, a new program about the production of the film featuring interviews with Baumbach, editor Jennifer Lame, production designer Jade Healy, costume designer Mark Bridges, and producer David Heyman. The Making of Marriage Story, a new program featuring behind-the-scenes footage, new interview with the composer uh, Randy Newman and Baumbach about the film's score, New program featuring uh, Bombback walking viewers through a key location from the film. Trailers and plus a note on the film, notes by the film by novelist Lynn uh, Ullman. So yeah, this is a really, really nice criterion because I'll show you why. If you take it out, you would have a nice slipcase here. Charlie and Nicole. And then uh, open it up. So instead of getting, oh, you do get a book, I'm sorry. So you get, like, multiple things. First, of course, you get your disc, which I'll show you that by itself. Nice artwork on there. You, but you actually get the letters that they wrote for each other in the movie. Like, you open, like, here's Charlie's letter from Nicole. You can literally, like, it's almost like paper, you know, material. And it, it, it's the whole note. Well, it's not the whole note, but it's like most of the most of the note from the movie. Same deal with uh, Nicole's note, or with uh, Charlie's note. I mean, it's I love the detail that went into this, you know, release. But uh, yeah, here is the booklet. Has some nice images on there. 
it's more of a pamphlet, but, um, you know. Okay, well, I come on, let's do it. Yeah, there's the, uh, pretty long pamphlet, but, yeah. Alright, and then, uh, yeah, it kind of just sits in there like that. Not my favorite way of, you know, packaging when it's just, like, kind of sitting there, but whatever. But yeah, I would give Marriage Story a 10 out of 10 as well. A lot of 10 out of 10s here, I know. Also, when I get done with the Criterions, I'm not going to read every single description on uh, all the other Blu-rays, too, because we have too many Blu-rays to go through. Uh, yeah, I'm not even halfway through this fucking thing, so. <laughs> uh, all right, next we have uh, Mishima, A Life in Four Chapters by uh, Paul Schrader, of course. Um, this is an amazing movie. It's also one of the most beautiful Criterions I own. Probably the most beautiful Criterion I own. The, um, the design of this Criterion really reflects the life of Mishima, you know, that we see, when you see him in the movie. It makes so much sense why it's designed like this. But yeah, here at the front, here's the spine. This is spine number 432, and here's the back. I'm not going to read this one because uh, I just, I don't know, I, I think reading it is, it's like taking way too much time. Uh, here's the slipcase. Here's the back of the slipcase. And you open it up, and you get even more artwork take the disc out and you can get you can see like the whole well maybe there we go the whole picture yeah those aren't uh yeah i just realized that that's those aren't um flowers like that's i think it's mishima in the fetal position yeah it's really art it's really amazing artwork but yeah here's the uh the book that comes with it i mean look look at this thing I mean that that's a thick that's a that's a hefty book, man. Holy shit! But yeah, I would give Mishima Life in Four Chapters ten out of ten. I know, I know, ten out of ten, ten out of tens all around. All right, another recent uh, Criterion release. Um, this is a double dip because I already own this movie. Uh, Parasite. This is the Criterion version of it. It has like the nice Morse code cover, and it's oh god, it's so nice. But um, this is, of course, by Bong Joon-ho. Here is the cover. Here is the spine. This is spine number 1054. And here's the back. Want to read that? You can. Because I am done reading. So when you take it out, look at that. It comes out like that. It has, like, a nice picture on it. Unfortunately, they really do too much with the design of the slipcase. Because, like, it's just that. And then just that. Like, it's the same fucking thing. Um, only difference is, you know, on these, on this side, they have white lines across their, uh, eyes, and on the, uh, oh god, and on this side, they have black lines, so it's really, that, that's the only difference, really. Um, oh, no, you know, I noticed, actually, no, the, um, on the front, <clears throat> the, the poor family has, um, black, uh, black lines over their, um, eyes, and on the back, the rich family has the, um, black lines on their, uh, line, on their face, so. That's cool. All right, so uh, we do get a little, a little, a little, uh, oh, it is a pamphlet, I forgot. Yeah, we do get a pamphlet from Parasite. Very nicely designed and everything. And uh, of course, we actually get two discs with this one because they loaded this thing up, they, lo they loaded this thing up with bonus features, including a whole other version of the film that's entirely in black and white. Like, holy shit. But yeah, here is the first disc artwork they have individual artwork which is nice and here is the second disc the black and white version is on, the, is on disc two which is good and here is the inside artwork but yeah this is a really nice criterion release people were kind of like being skeptical about this but i'm like hey man this is a I am okay with this. You get the black and white version. You get all these bonus features. and con There's even a commentary track that, bon that Bong Joon-ho recorded in English. The Madman. He didn't have to do that for us, but he did. Uh, Parasite 10 out of 10 was actually my favorite movie of last year. All right. Next, um, you know what? Yeah, I'll show it to you. Um, so this was at my work. It came in. Um, I think it is out of print because when I looked it up on eBay, all the listings say out of print, out of print, out of print. So, and I got this for a really good deal, too, at my work. Um, and I was so shocked that I found this, because you can only really get this movie if it's in a um, box set, a certain box set. 
they don't actually sell the, um, the, the, the version separately anymore. So I think this is out of print. So I do own myself a, a, a finally a, an out of print movie release. Uh, and that is Jacques Tati's Playtime. So yeah, you can only really get this in his um, Jacques Tati you know, box set and everything. So when I saw this, I was like, this looks bootleg. But no, this is a real thing. This actually was how you could buy the movie at one point. But now they've, you know, put it with a box set. So this is actually um, out of print, I think. Because, yeah, because I looked it up on uh, Amazon. And I, I don't think you can really buy it, um, you know, from a, a, a credible, well, not, I mean, not say credible, but like a uh, an official source. It's like a third party. So yeah, this is, uh, this is a really cool find. And I love the movie as well. Because I saw it when I uh, when I had Criterion Channel for a bit there, but yeah, this is uh, spy number one twelve. That's how you know it's old because it's in the hundreds. But yeah, here's the back, and um, yeah, I, I really love this movie a lot. I think it's like a really great uh, take on you know capitalism and just the future. But yeah, here's a nice uh, little uh, pamphlet there with an article. This was back when they did chapters on the side, and then there's the disc. So, yeah. I am glad I own Playtime. That's, a, that's also a 10 out of 10, by the way. All right, moving on. We have uh, Yasu Jiro Ozu's Tokyo Story. This movie, oh my god, man. This destroyed me, mainly because... um. For those who don't know, my grandpa did pass away today, uh, to, uh, this um, this year. Uh, I think back in September he passed away. So watching this um, really fucked with me because there's a lot of great conversations in here about getting old and not feeling like you you know belong in the world anymore because you're um, I don't know uh, you know older and you don't think you belong in this generation anymore. So a lot of that talk and there's also just a lot of great great family drama that works so well within the context of the story it oops it's just an amazing movie and um i recommend it highly but yeah here's the front there's the spy spine this is spine number 217 another older criterion release and here's the back and then inside you just get your nice nice disc with some artwork on it and a pamphlet. It kind of, kind of like, uh, just out really of a nice, you know, article or booklet, or whatever. There's the pamphlet. I wonder if, like, back in the day, like, you know, when, when back in like this Criterion or these Criterions, they, they like all they did. I wonder if that was all they did was just, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, you know, pamphlets. You know, what if they didn't do booklets? Uh, here's the inside artwork. And I would give Tokyo Story a 10 out of 10. All right, last criterion before we move on to the Blu-rays. We have tons of Blu-rays I got to get through, so I want to get through these criterions. It is uh, David Cronenberg's Videodrome. So I watched this, I don't think it was last night, but it was a, a couple nights before for the very first time. This is a really, really fucked up movie. Um, insanely fucked up, I would say. But uh, it, it looks amazing on Criterion, and also uh, it, this is a whole, it's just a very nice Criterion release. So here's the front, here is the spine, here's the other spine, I want to show you this spine because it looks like a videotape, it's so cool. I love that. And here's the back. And when we take it out, it looks like a damn VHS tape. Long live the new flush. You know, there's a, there's a spine, and then there's the back of it, it it's so cool. Cool release. And then uh, when you open it up, you don't get any disc art. You don't get any uh, background artwork. We do get, like, some nice little bit of that. And then, of course, they give you a huge, huge booklet. And also chapters are behind it. But yeah, they give you a really nice, big booklet with tons of stuff in there. And I also gave Videodrome a 10 out of 10. Um, it was almost a 9, but the more I thought about it, it became a 10. Alright, so that is the Criterion part of this update. I know, that took a long time. It took about 40 minutes. I don't know why it took me that long. But we're about to hopefully speed through the Blu-rays. I have a ton, though, so let's go through. Alright, first up, we got 
No, uh, Christopher Nolan's Memento. I, I saw this recently for the first time. Absolutely loved it. So when I saw it at my work for like five bucks or six bucks, I, I was like, I'm picking it up. Here's the front. It's a spine. Here's the back. I wanted to get the DVD release because I know there's like a, um, there's an Easter egg on the DVD. Here's a disc. Uh, there's an Easter egg on the DVD that like lets you watch the movie in chronological order. Like that sounds so cool. So I, I really hope, I don't know, one day I'll uh, hope I can find that um, DVD release. But uh, next I have uh, Paul Thomas Anderson's The Master. This is, uh, I found this also at work for like five bucks, I think. Um, here's the front. I, I think that was supposed to come with a slipcover because it just kind of feels like that. I don't know. There's Joaquin Phoenix's character in the back. When you open it up... You do get the, you d oh no no here's the um it's a so this is a okay it's a reversible cover I don't know what I was thinking so if you could do this now uh, now it should look it should look better now because now we can actually see like the the back and everything yeah there we go see that looks a lot better right it's fine and there's the back. Bonus features and some information about the movie and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, here is the two discs. We got the Blu-ray, of course, and the DVD. Uh, oh yeah, Memento, ten out of ten. The Master, ten out of ten. All right, next we have the mask. I also found this at my work for like really cheap. I think it was like five bucks. Um, I definitely took a uh, Took up on that offer because this is my favorite Jim Carrey movie. Um, it's I, I love it. It's just so amazing. Such a fun movie. Ten out of ten for me as well. And then uh, to open it up, and we just got our just got our disc. At least it has, at least it has a little bit of artwork on it. You know, that's nice. All right, then we have. I got this one on Amazon because uh, I watched it online one night and fell in love with it. Uh, Mary and Max. This is a, I think it's from New Zealand or Australia. It might be from Australia. It's either Australia, it's, a, yeah, okay, it's, it's Australia. It's an Australian anime, uh, stop motion animation film about two pen pals. Um, that's pretty much, that's, uh, that's all I'll say. I recommend this movie highly though. It's seriously one of the most fucking emotionally gripping animated movies I've ever seen. Uh, but yeah, you take it out, you open it up and get like a nice little, some discard work on there. Mary and Max, 10 out of 10. All right, next we have, I found this one at work as well, the Lego movie. Um, this is, I think was like a, uh, it had to be in some kind of like bullshit store release because it has that stupid fucking sticker in the back that I can't get off. But I digress. Uh, Lego movie is really good. Seriously, one of like the, the best animated movies out there. Inside, just got your normal Blu-ray with Wild Style on it and the DVD with Emmett on it. Interesting that they put Emmett on the DVD and not the Blu-ray. It's interesting. Uh, Lego Movie, 10 out of 10. Okay, then we have It Chapter 2. I also thought, I saw this one at work as well. I had already owned the first one. I wasn't a huge fan of this one, but I want to rewatch it. Maybe I, ch maybe I changed my mind on it. On it. But, yeah, I mean, uh, yep, here's the front, here's the spine, and here's the back. A truly epic conclusion to one of the greatest horror stories in cinema history. And then when you open it up, you actually get two Blu-ray discs. Oops, because uh, there's a I guess there's a bunch of bonus features on it, on the, on the. Well, also because I mean, the, it's a three-hour movie, so makes sense. Here's the two Blu-ray discs, and there's also a DVD. But I mean, there's I mean, there's nothing on it either. But whatever. Uh, I think It Chapter 2 I gave a 7 or a 6 out of 10. I can't remember. Um, but I'll rewatch it very soon and hopefully change my mind for the better or worse. We'll see. Okay, next. We have uh, my top five favorites of this year, uh, The Invisible Man. I got this one at Black Friday uh, at Best Buy for like $7. It was really cheap. I'm so glad though because this is such an amazing movie. Uh, I was, and the thing is, I was one of those people that was like, hey, yeah, this looks like shit from the trailers. And I saw the trailers, I was like, this looks fucking stupid. 
I watched the movie, I fell in love with this thing. And I think it's I think it's got to be down to like you know Lee Lee Winnell's, um direction because it just I think I, I don't think it would have worked without his direction. I really don't think so. But yeah, here's the cover, the spine, and then there's the back. You do get a, you actually do get a, uh, do get a commentary with uh, him on it, so that's cool. But yeah, here's the Blu-ray. And the DVD. Yeah, I can't wait to rewatch this again as well. It, it is definitely in my like top t uh, top five or top ten favorites of uh, this year. All right, moving on, we have Forgetting Sarah Marshall. I watched this one night on Hulu and really liked it. I surprised myself how much by how much I liked it because I'm not really into like these kind of rom com movies, but I thought this movie handled um you know the. Uh, both sides of a relationship pretty well you know it doesn't show just like oh yeah it's the man's fault or oh yeah it's the woman's fault now it, it's it's both their faults so I, I like that they did that but yeah here's the uh the blu-ray and it has some artwork on it and then there's the dvd which doesn't but i i like the dvd i like the dvd design of it it's not bad um but yeah really funny movie uh i think it's a digital copy of it actually it is but um Wait, is it? Oh, I could try to get that, actually. I don't know. It's, it's probably, you know, uh, expired, but whatever. All right. Uh, we have... Oh, yeah. I bought these recently as well at my at my, uh, at my work. Um, I now own every single Evil Dead movie. So, there's that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Freaking Sarah Mar Mar Marshall, I gave a 9 out of 10. Invisible Man, I also gave a 9 out of 10. And then I would give Evil Dead 1 an 8 or a 7 out of 10. Evil Dead 2 a 10 out of 10. And an Army of Darkness I have not yet seen. Okay, and then we have um, Haley Steinfeld in The Edge of Seventeen. This is also at my work, and I saw it for like six bucks, and I really enjoy this movie. It's one of the best coming-of-age movies out there. I feel like it is. Um, it's ridiculously funny. It also has a really great heart. It also has really great heartfelt moments in there as well. Better to the Blu-ray and DVD. I think it's, I, I either gave this a 9 or an 8 out of 10. Probably a 9, because I really like that movie a lot. All right, and then we have, uh, I finally found this for a really good price. Um, it's still going at my work for like 15 bucks, so I'm, I can't believe I got this so cheap. I got this uh, on Black Friday for like 6 bucks. Uh, Creed 2. I now own every single Rocky movie. Um, I, I've, been, I've been looking for this one for a cheap price for a while, because I, I really did enjoy the sequel a lot. Um, on some days I probably watch it over the original or the first one because there are a lot of great things about this um, This second one, so I appreciate that. Yeah, great movie. Glad I own it now And then when you open up you get the uh, Digital code and then there's the blu-ray and the DVD nothing crazy It is a Warner Brothers release so I wasn't expecting really too much Okay, and next we have I found this for only $5 at my work, and that is Captain America, The Winter Soldier on Blu-ray. So there is the spine, there's the back. Um, this is like either my favorite or my second favorite. I think it's my second favorite out of the entire um, MCU because it's just how amazing it is. I love it so much. There's the Blu-ray. And then next, I also found this one at work. Um, it is Atonement. I like this movie a lot. Okay, I have my ratings for the other ones. Shit, my bad. Um, Creed 2 I gave either a... I think it was an 8. It might have been a 9. I'm not sure. 8 or a 9 or a 10. Captain America Winter Soldier I gave a 5. Or a, a, a 10. A 10. Hands down. But yeah, Atonement. Amazing movie. Really, really good. I think I, I gave this one a 9 out of 10, I think. I don't think it was a 10. I don't think it was a 10. It might have been a 10. It might go a 10 to whenever you, whenever you watch it, but... Uh, for now, it's a nine. I'm sorry. Excuse me. All right. Next, we have an American Werewolf in London. London. I got this one around Halloween time, and I haven't rewatched it since. So, but yeah, I think it has a lot of bonus features on it too. So that's cool. Gave this one a ten out of ten. All right. We have uh, Clint Eastwood's American Sniper. I've not seen it yet. But I've heard things. I've heard things about this movie. Bad things and good things. There's the Blu-ray. 
it looks like your typical Clint Eastwood romp, because, you know, he's an American or whatever. Um, we have an American Psycho. This is, of course, the uncut version, directed by Mary Heron. Uh, yeah, I love this movie a lot. Um, the more I watch it, like, the more you pick up on, like, hidden details within the story, and then also the ending makes a lot more sense the more you watch it. Really good movie. Christian Bale is, like, hands down, like, one of the, I think it's, like, his best performance in the movie, as, as in this. But, yeah, um, I give this a 10 out of 10. Then we have, uh, 1917 by Sam Mendes. I've only seen it once, and I liked it a lot, and I want to rewatch it so I can like it even more. Um, especially on Blu-ray, because I'm sure it'll look great on Blu-ray. And it just looks like your basic, you know, basic release, really boring, black discs. I think I gave this a 9 out of 10. 40-year-old version uh, has not aged quite well, but I think it's still a fine movie. Steve Carell, you know, this is like kind of where he got started. Uh, he's really good in it. Uh, I think it's funny at times as well. Like, it does have a 20 moments. Then we have, um, one of the best pickups out of, I think it's one of the best pickups out of, uh, you know, Black Friday. Uh, and I got it for, like, $11 as Toy Story 4. So now I own every Toy Story movie. I'm glad I do, because these movies are great, and I want to rewatch them anytime I can. Uh, lots of bonus features on here as well. But yeah, eleven bucks. Like I, I, I couldn't, be, I couldn't beat it. I really couldn't. I'm sorry. But yeah, here's the, uh, the, the Blu-ray feature disc, and then their DVD. And below or on, yeah, uh, underneath the feature disc, we have the Blu-ray bonus disc with, of course, Duke Kaboom, which is I think the toy that got them sued, which is awesome. <laughs> oh god. Uh, I think I gave Toy Story 4. Oh, yeah, a 40 year old version I gave 7 or 6, I think. Uh, and Toy Story 4, I, I gave like a, a, a 10 or a 9. All right, we have, uh, we have Sorry to Bother You. Saw this one at work as well. Um, one of the most original films out there, period. I recommend it highly. Lady Keith Stanfield is a treasure. Comes with a commentary, I think, by Boots Riley, which is awesome. I'm going to listen to that for sure. And inside, it's got your Blu-ray and DVD. Simple stuff. I gave my friend the digital code, so that's why it's not in there. All right, next, another pickup from Black Friday. Um, surprise, I had it with the slipcover, because if it didn't, I probably wouldn't have picked it up. Uh, and that is Shazam. And it has, like, the lenticular slipcover. I think I got it for, like, five bucks. So, like, it was really cheap, at, uh, you know, for Black Friday. But, yeah, look at that. That's so cool. I'm so glad I found it with the, I'm so glad they had them with the slips. That's so cool. Um, but yeah, I think I gave... Oh, yeah, sorry to bother you. It was a 10 out of 10, by the way. And then Shazam, I'd give a 9 or an 8. It's... I mean, it surprised me, because I'm not a huge DC fan. So when I saw this, I was like, wow, this is amazing. Like, compared to any other DC movie. This is fun. It was energetic. It had life to it. I want to watch it again. <laughs> I could watch it again, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's a really fun movie. All right, next we have um, Rocket Man. I got this at Walmart for like eight dollars. It was really cheap, and I like the movie a lot, so I, rec I I'm glad I bought it. Um, I want to rewatch it because I've only seen it once, and that was in theaters, so I wanted to have to rewatch it. You do get a little excerpt. I like you. I like to get a little excerpt from uh, his book. But yeah, there's the that's got the digital code and then. Uh, Blu-ray and DVD. Simple, simple. We're almost done here. I think I have like a half a stack left. So I could just bl I could just bl uh, blow through these if you'd like. If you'd like me to, I could. Well, I thought I could. There we go. Uh, Rocket Man, I gave a 9 out of 10, I think. All right, then we have uh, Ready or Not. Gave this one a 8 or a 9 out of 10. A lot of fun, that one is. You have uh, Ponyo. This is, uh, I think, one of Studio Ghibli's underrated movies, I'd feel. Uh, I gave it like a 9 or an 8 out of 10. I think it was either a 9 or, a 10 or an 8. I, the, only, I, the only thing... Uh, I love the thing about uh, 
Ghibli is like, you know, they always have so much artwork on their, uh, you know, releases and stuff. And also, like have a booklet, too. Like, you don't, like, what? This is a criterion. Like, Ghibli, what you doing? Why can't Disney be more cool like this, you know? All right, then we have uh, Alex Alexander Payne's Nebraska. Have not seen it. I'm going to start making another pile because the Blu-rays are about to fall over. All right, and I picked these up at work. They were only, they were both five bucks each, so I said, fuck it. Uh, Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, and Jumanji, The Next Level. I like these movies. They're fun, especially this one. Like, this one got shit on a lot. I think it was really fun. And, uh, you know, uh, Ali Wong, not Ali Wong, um, Aqua, Aquafina was in this one, and she did an amazing impression of... Danny DeVito. I think she did a great job with that impression. And then, got Jojo Rabbit by Taika Waititi. Love that one as well. Oh yeah, uh, I would say for Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, I think it was like a 7, and then also a 7 for Jumanji, the next level. And Jojo, I gave a 10. Then we have Doctor Sleep. The sequel to The Shining. I give this one an 8 out of 10. We have Chicago. This is the Diamond Edition. Uh, I have not seen this in a while, but I think I gave it an 8 when I first watched it. Probably, it probably goes up on rewatch, honestly. Uh, Black Klansman. That's a 10 out of 10. Amazing film by Spike Lee. Uh, a Cure for Wellness. Um, I like this more than some people do. I give it a 7 out of 10. Uh, 8 Mile, if I can get it. Yeah, 8 Mile. It gives us an 8 out of 10, I think. Yeah, uh, amazing, great movie. I really love this movie a lot. Eminem is, like, really entertaining here, and it's an overall really enjoyable movie. And then I bought the two Disney Star Wars movies that I will own ever. Force Awakens, 9 out of 10. No, 8 out of 10. And then uh, Last Jedi, 9 out of 10. I like that movie a lot. And then we have, uh, I got this for like $25. It was a really good deal because you get like um, a lot of movies in it. This is the Shrek Ultimate Collection. It comes with all six movies, 10 shorts from like, you know, throughout the years of the Shrek universe, and then five TV episodes of that Puss in Boots show. I mean, that's really cool. Come on. Can't beat that for $25. Uh, I would say, okay, so for rating-wise, I'd say um, Shrek... Oh, fuck, this thing is kind of breaking apart on me. I just noticed that. All right, for rating-wise, I would say Shrek 1 is a 9 out of 10. Yeah, 9 out of 10. No, 8 out of 10? It was either 8 or 9 out of 10. I think it was 8 or 9. Shrek 2 is either a 9 or a 10. Shrek the third is like a two and a half or a three. I'm sorry, uh, five or a six. I, I got you out of ten. Shrek Forever After is an eight out of ten. Uh, Puss in Boots, I think, is like a seven or a six. Shrek the Musical is like a seven or eight. And that's it. I can't really write the other shorts because I don't remember the shorts very well. And then we have this, uh, what is this? The, uh, oh, this is the uh, digibook that I bought of uh, Green Mile at my work. 10 out of 10 movie right here. Uh, you know, this is from the same guy who did uh, Shawshank, and it really shows, because this thing is almost identical to Shawshank at some points. I'm just kidding. It's not really. Just, like, the whole, like, usage of the jail is, like, kind of reminiscent of Shawshank. All right, and then last, and but certainly not least, I got this really cool steel book from my work. This is a four-film collection for the Spider-Man movies. comes with Venom. Uh, Homecoming, Spider-Verse, and Far From Home. I really only bought it for Far From Home, but I'm glad I got two other copies of, you know, Homecoming and Spider-Verse, and also I own Venom now. Come on, like, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I've, I would say Homecoming is a... either a 8 or a 9... Venom is a <laughs> either a two or a three, but I love the movie. I I'll, I'll enjoy the movie any other day. It's a horrible movie, but I, I enjoy every second of it. Spider Verse is a ten out of ten, and Spider Man and Far From Home I'd say a nine or eight as well. 
I don't know. I've only seen I've only seen Far From Home once, and I liked it a lot when I first saw it in theaters. Okay, that is uh, going to be it for the whole. Oh, I have to stretch. Oh God. Oh God. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Um. Yeah, it took an hour. Okay. Well. Uh, thank you for joining me on this uh, journey. I guess for my uh, Blu-ray updates. I know there's a, quite a lot of shit there. Um. Sorry, I'm not making any videos, really. Uh, I don't really find the, uh, I can't really find the creative spark, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm going to get back to watching Carol. I was watching that on Netflix, really good so far. So I'm going to get back to watching that. Um, and I already know when I uh, turn this off, it's going to take like a day or two for this to even like, show up on my channel. But whatevs. Uh, when you guys see this, I hope you guys um, enjoyed it. If you did, remember to leave a like and subscribe to see similar content to this. Uh, also, don't forget to follow me on my socials, my letterbox. It will be down below in the description box. Also, I think I linked it in my bio for the YouTube, I think. I don't remember. Or my about page. Uh, but yeah, that's going to have to about do it. Um, I hope you guys all have a safe and happy holidays. Um, this is going to be a different Christmas for a lot of people. So I recommend, I, I hope you guys, I really do hope you guys from the bottom of my heart, um, you know, I'm losing words. Oh, stay safe because, uh, you know, with COVID and everything. So, all right. Uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, all that jazz. Uh, I will talk to you guys uh, sometime whenever the next time I see you guys. See you guys later. Bye-bye.